Really? Ooh. On first pick. They don't care. I mean, okay. one of Audi's most played champions. That yeah, his most played champion at the moment. But and I mean, you said already a lot of teams are starting to prioritize this Orn more in the LPL. I know it's been like that for a long time elsewhere, but not so much here in the Chinese region. So I'm still kind of looking at this going, right, how do we want to try and approach this then? Because it means that you are going to get the, the same matchup again for EDG last time, where you're going to get the Aphelios, more than likely going to be the Ezreal here going through for EDG. Same support as well going over for DMO. So it's not looking like much has changed for the bottom lane here on either side. Nor for EDG. It's going to be the same picks once again. And what does that mean? Rek'Sai, yep, lock yep. it in. And let's go to the second ban phase. Give me something new. Yeah, I mean, look, sides might have swapped, but this is looking fairly similar to game number one. So, yeah, I look, I mean, both teams kind of go, no, look, we're happy with the draft the way that it worked. It was more so the way we operated in it. We'll have to see if we will continue forward. So the option, though, for EDG to ban away the likes of this Azir, which was give them a little bit of nuisance just in trying to get onto Shubin in some of these fights. So I think definitely this is an option EDG should consider here. That's why you're expecting to see the Azir again if it's not banned away. You've got the AD jungler. Demo in game one ran the AP solo liners in Mordekaiser, in Azir. Uh, Scout will not get his LeBlanc again. Demo making sure of that. Starting to have a look now. I mean, there's so much that both these guys have played that you're going to be going right down the list to figure out what they want to start banning away from the mid lane. You do have a, a pretty mid-game heavy team, at least when the Ezreal and the Lee Sin here for EDG. So I was going to say if they wanted to go towards something like the, the Zoe or if they want to go towards something like this um, the TF or maybe even a Galio that we've seen a little bit before, we could potentially go towards something along these lines. What we've seen in game one, I mean, when you had Orn, when you had Ezreal, because Ezreal's bloody great late. Yeah. Ezreal's fantastic late. That's why I love seeing the matchup, not so much from a Felios side, but seeing Ezreal into a Felios. Both those 80 carries can be so situational within their compositions. So what is the change? Because with no scout, LeBlanc, with Twyla's champion pool getting shortened a little bit, I wonder here if DMO were just going to first rotation the Azir if it's not banned, if they really want to prioritize it that heavily. Uh, otherwise, you could end up seeing Scout going back towards something like the Echo that you were talked about already to see if they can make something work for them through this more assassin-focused again mid laner. There was banned last game, actually yeah. in the first ban phase. So, Okay, Chalitza, show us what's up. So at least here on DMO's side, you're looking at a very much more of an aggressive, let's get into the face of EDG this time. You've got the bear for the engage. You've got the Rek'Sai who wants to be getting in on top of people as well. So DMO this time around looking to have a little bit more agency when it comes to those fights rather than waiting for EDG to engage on top of them. Ten Scout just says, I'll take it this time. Yeah. So I mean, look, pick. Scout is super good in this Azir. He had a crazy high win rate on it in spring. Doesn't have the same this time around coming into summer, but he'll start to rack up a few of these as this, this bit goes on. And he's looking to add one more to that notch. Ah, good. Of course. So, this is built to dive. I mean, yeah. we'd say that with the Volley Bear due to Stormbringer with Rek'Sai, but with Twyla in the mix, this is built to dive and is a very interesting comp. And I also want to say, by the way, that Twyla, although Although this Zillion he didn't pick up the win with, Twyla's Zillion is so damn good. So I am not going to be surprised if we see him churning out a heap of damage when he hits this two items. And especially when you've got a Volley Bear, a Rek'Sai, a Zillion now as well. You're going to be looking real damn good when you do get to these super aggressive dive in on top of people. And with all this uh, resets and resurrections that will be coming through, this could be a, a bit hot to handle for EDG side. The more emphasis that can be put on to uh, Shubin after game one. Because this time, he's got more of a front line to play with as well. Plus, the safety of Azillion. So, be interesting to see how dynamic shift. Azir this time, on the side of EDG. It's some clear scaling that we saw last game play through once again. And it also means that now you've got 
a, a double way of playing around this Azir Emperor's Divide. So oftentimes when we look at this Emperor's Divide, it's like, cool, this is going to be able to reset your fights. You're going to be able to at least shove back these dive compositions and give yourselves a moment to breathe. But when you've got the likes of a Zillion and a Volley Bear paired together, you've now got the Q on the Volley Bear. He's going to be sped up by the Zillion. So you're looking at a super quick bear that's going to be running you down. And there is always the opportunity that then that Emperor's Divide needs to be blown earlier rather than later. And then you get the ultimate coming through from Volley as well to just jump over and keep this fight going. It's a time bear. It's like a time yeah. share, but more important here, this game around for DMO. Let's go. It's game two, and we've got Groovy Zillion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Twilight knows his stuff in the Zillion, so he's going to be a crowd pleaser with that one. But I'm just saying, look, when we look at Dominus' composition right now, as he said, very dive heavy, but you do have Shubin again on this uh, Felios that can do a lot of work. And when you're looking towards EDG, who are going to be trying to at least play back a little bit from this heavy engage with BBD moving away on the Ezreal, having Scout try and reset these fights with the Emperor's Divide, there is the opportunity for EDG to have some wiggle room, especially when we get to those later game portions of the game where you've got a lot more power packed into this Azir than the Zillion. But definitely in these early early stages, it's going to be pretty topsy-turvy as to who's going to come in on top. I mean, I look at Chalitza, he's got press the attack here on the floating bear. Mm. So, three different runes we've seen so far. Uh, Aftershock's also in there, but Conqueror, PTA, and Grasp, the main ones. And as I just mentioned, Aftershock has sh shown... Uh, Lyric said this last night on the podcast. It was just Jungle Volley that we've seen a little bit on. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, PTA is going to be interesting going into Orn. The Gods Verse. Bear God versus Ram God. Always fun. All we need is the Anivia in the mid lane, and we're set. And then Aurelian Soul, I don't know. He fits in. I don't think he's a god. He though. created he's just a the massive gods. cosmic thing. Yeah, I what? don't know what is. He created the universe. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'm going to get up to date on my lore. I used to be really good at it. And this is what we see every game, by the way. And that trading is going to be pretty simple here from EDG, but no, Shubin, of course, he starts with Severin, so won't mean too much in the long run. Ooh. Wizard. Oh, this is actually really good for Chalitza. Press the attack enabled. Yeah. If you stand in Sky Splitter, you shouldn't. <laughs> I feel a little bit bad, though, because when you look at the Spectator client, just for anyone who hasn't seen a huge amount of Volley Bear, the Sky Splitter will show on the Spectator a full second before Audi actually gets to see it. Really? Yeah, there's only one second for Audi to react to it. So it's a two-second cast, and you get one second visibility as the opponent. So huh. it does become a little bit more difficult to dodge than it looks like on your screen. So don't just start shouting That's at all these people. Bonus. I would have, like, you know the, the guy watching the football match? He's got his beer. Uh, and he's yeah. like, I would have... I would have hit that. I would have got that in the back of the net. But no, you won't have. It's not as easy as it looks, all right? <laughs> you got a lot of North American people going, football. <laughs> but then soccer, NFL. soccer. Soccer, whatever, yeah. yeah. See, it gets confusing as well in Ireland because we got Gaelic football, which yeah. is a whole different breed entirely. So I mean, we call... It's, you've, you've got it. But the yeah, thing is, we call similar. footy footy is AFL, yeah. but also football soccer. So it's a bit confusing. A scout. Ooh, I don't think he had a soldier available with the Arise. So he had to leave. Sorry, yeah, got to get out of there nice and quick. But this is what we wanted to see a little bit more of from Mako is getting out and making these early moves, especially when they seem to be having a pretty happy time in this bottom lane shoving in after that first trade went so well. But that flash, that's big. Mm -hmm. And DMO so far, we're looking at Chalita, who's got biscuits. Footwear, okay. Last stand so, there too. So now you were talking about, look, how, ooh, Twyla taking a lot of return damage though. You've got that flash burn, you've got Xiaopeng who wants to play around this mid. You've even got Chalitza as well who's shoving in, in the top lane, so there is a potential for a lot of attention towards Scout here, so we'll have to make sure he's managing that mana bar and those soldiers a little bit better to make sure he can still shuffle out if there is danger that comes his way because he's got a big old target on his back at this stage. I guess in this series so far we've seen like it's just been jungle versus jungle and about EDG not getting their soul lanes off the ground. We came into today's segment talking a lot about as Guys, it comes through again. A lot about how the soul lanes of EDG have influenced their map. JJ is going to pay some attention to the bot side this starting game. His stretch line lands once again. Shubin does have his flash available, but uses the heal. It's a flash from Mitsuki, while mid, a bit of a dive. Scout doesn't have his flash from the last trade. First blood secured, no trade. Given over to Twyla. 
Triumph will keep Shout Pong up and healthy. And we just talked about it. Look, you've just burnt your flashes, Scout. You're going to be the target of Shout Pong. Manages to get the kill. JJ looking to answer, though, off of this teleport back in. We'll see. It's double bomb, though. <laughs> and uh, yeah, super easy here. But Twyla gets out no harm. So the thing is that Twyla on this Zillion will actually be quite a bit of a carry if he gets rolling because not all well zillion in general you think oh no look he's just got these bombs but twyla zillion is a different breed he is the highest damage when he played the zillion in summer last time against that was when hey helper was still in the roster but he will do a lot of work here so getting these early kills onto him will definitely help out in helping dmo in these mid-game fights okay still trading better himself a uh, Comet available on the Azir, that would be part of the reason why. As uh, Mako roaming once again, but this time, this game, is not going to be punished. As this is a deep commitment, putting the control board down, of course. And we get Pro View. And we also get Twilight who plays on windowed mode. Or borderless. One of them. I think it's windowed. <laughs> Yeah, it looks a little bit funky, but still, look, able to pick up the kill there. You've already got the two amplifying tomes for the Zillion, so well underway. Well, more, uh, not certain what build he's going to go. We do see the Summon Airy. Usually on a Zillion, you'll actually oftentimes see the Glacial Augment, and they just kind of go towards this more utility-focused style, but uh, Twyla more than likely still building that GLP. But he doesn't have ulti, and he's been caught out. Sonic Wave into Resonating Strike. He's just dead. Nicely done, but Scout ne needs to run away. His death sentence will secure his fate as well. And a kill given over to Xiao Pang on one for one trade. And this is the nice thing about the volley top is you can bring him to these fights nice and easy because he will always have that priority. The big issue here though is that's that teleport burned and DMO will need to turn this into a dragon now before Scout gets back onto the map. Otherwise they run the risk of Audi shoving out this top wave and being able to join in for a dragon fight with that ultimate available. But the hero and the dragon's gonna go down. Ping's going from BBD, but they're a little bit too late. Dragon drops. Make her ready for a dredge line, but ops not to. So first dragon of the game here for DMO with a 2-1 to one score. Nice, death sentence. Hang on, blast code. Well, Shuvan wants to go on in. Xiaopang wasn't really ready for that one, but he has the knockup, and Mako's going to suffer. That was I innovative from yeah. DMO. Mitsuki coming out of his shell a little bit in this series. I like to see it. And you don't expect that as EDG. You think, right, these guys are back. They just got a kill in mid. They just got Dragon. They're going to want to spend some of that gold, or at least Xiaopeng will definitely want to be returning to farming so he's not falling too far behind on pace. You can already see he was, has hit that level 6, so keeping match with JJ at the moment. But They I need mean, to stop the back of Chilitsu, and they've done it. Yeah. Here comes Scout, but yeah. no, it doesn't have the ulti available either. No, so they're going to back away, but still DMO playing this early game well, and this is surprising. For me. Dark Passage is there, Trusha Barrage, bit of damage on the way out, but he does have Severum and we'll start choosing that now, but good trade here from Mako and BBD. I'm surprised to see this from EDG though, because they were so strong on first bloods, but they're falling behind here. Bit of damage out from Chalita, second part of the W going to come through as Stormbringer under the turret, out he calls the Forge God, gets the knockup, but not in time. Well played by Xiaopeng for his second kill. Jeje, he's got this as well. <laughs> I mean, you can try, but there's no wave, there's no way out, and you will manage to turn that back around. Meanwhile, but Audi's still going to lose out on a lot of CS on. top lanes. What's so. happening here? Twyla is on a, a journey of some kind. The wizard will give her a kill to Scout. Oh, it doesn't have the damage to clear the back creeps. Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, we'll manage to go down there, and with JJ now, knowing, hey, Twyla's gone, he's got no TP. Shell Pung's out of the picture, too. I can start up this Rift Herald. This has been a very big turn of events. This has been a weird early game, to be what honest, man. When you get a zillion? Let's have a look and see what <laughs> happened mid, because bottom left hand, he's straight. Oh, he was shoved back. Yeah, and then obviously not wanting to run back in towards the Azir, but here yeah. we go, Xiaopong. Yeah, we are now acting more like the LPL. The full in engage comes through. Demo start the kill off, but Audi with a two man knockout yet again. Chalita back with the Dark Passage. Scout's now here, but he doesn't have the Emperor's Divide. However, Herald is stopped. Look at BBD though, he's still shoving in this bot lane. So when you've got that jungler now down for DMO, they can't start up the Rift Herald and you're getting this turret plates onto BBD. So EDG are winning out in this. This has been a more blood heavy game. Definitely has been. Uh, plates gone down, you mentioned BBD. He's already got the Sheen. Show me tip and then what? Only the boots on top of that for now, but still a very good start here for the Ezreal. While JJ returns and says round two. 
Let me look to start this up. There isn't people here from DMO, but he's not going to do it fast enough before the likes of Suki ward. can roam up this river. You got Xiao Pung in the wings, and Chirita almost having access to that ultimate again. Going to be a little bit of time, so if they can force EDG back, they might be able to do something. No, they're not going for it. They've okay. just decided to get this one. Fair enough. Well, I mean, look, they're going to get these turret plates anyway. Uh, Shubin's does pushing here, so we'll just go, right, you know what? You guys are going to get this Rift Herald. That's fine. We are getting the plates you're going to eventually get anyway in this bottom lane, so we'll just work with this instead. He got three. That's what happens when you have Chakram as a failure, and so you stand next to the turret. It's just so damn quick. So BBD straight means pretty much nothing now. With the BF Sword, they get the extra shove in. It'll be a nice back here. DMO in this early game, yet again, leading in gold at the 10-minute mark. Not as uh, severe as it was in game one, but still a nice lead to start the game off. And they've set themselves up for the mountain coming up in a minute 10. But don't forget, EDG will be the ones that outscale in the later stages. You got an Azir, you got yep. that Ezreal, plus all the Orin items to give out as well as nice little Christmas presents. So they're going to be in great shape when it comes to the later portion of the game. So if DMO are not getting the snowball rolling, there is the potential here that EDG just sit back, relax, maybe fight for a third or fourth Drake, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe they manage to scheme one out of the hands of DMO. Feels nice when you are with a zillion though. Xiaopang hits eight just so much sooner. The other, the other bonus is like, you're probably going to be a level up as the jungle if Twilight keeps funneling the experience, the passive of Zillion over to Xiao Pung. Xiao Pung already up a bit in CS, has Warriors, but so does Jia Jia. They're now grouping around, 25 seconds of this dragon, and you can see Chalice is actually walking down as well. Doesn't have the teleport, Audi does, so has shoved in that top lane, and, and Lena, now they're going to look to see if they can fight nice and early, because... If EDG are just able to play this back, they can have Audi shove in this top lane, but DMO going to start up this dragon the second it spawns. They spotted out Chalice, so they know he's here, and of course he's been missing for lane for quite a while. The Herald mid going to be the play for EDG while the dragon goes down. Look, we said already, they're looking to fight for a third Drake, a fourth Drake. Yeah. They're happy to give this one over and get these advantages instead. Get the gold on towards Scout, accelerate this guy, Audi as well, getting a few turret plates himself. So EDG happy overall with that trade. I mean, it's quite large when you think that Scout started the game getting camped. He's now 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. He's picked mm -hmm. up those turret plates. He's 10 CS ahead. That first item should be coming pretty soon. Well, for Audi, you mentioned, Sunfire Cape on the horizon for sure with the uh, Bramble Vest already in hand. And Scout is one of my favorite Azir players in the league. He is so good in this champion. The, the decision making as well as when to go for these aggressive swoop and boot plays versus play it back and just keep auto attacking down. Like, I love watching him and when he's got already this far ahead and he's starting to get to a place where he can command those later game fights, I'm happy to watch EDG play this out. Pause for a second, Dagda, because JJ and Xiaopang heading towards the top side. Chalit's already at half health. The frenzied mall needed for the heal back, but Call the Forge God gets a knockup while JJ makes his way in, but he's bursted out, flashes away. Here comes Xiaopang's ulti, and he's now in the perfect position to hit up Audi as well. The Bell's Breast stops, but he flashes in the end. And with the speed up from Twyla, who's now joined the fray, DMO should be okay. They get out, they win the fight. I was so confused with Chalitza's sirens going off. Is Shepon going back in? He is. Feeling confident maybe if Twyla's nearby, nice. but far away. Gets a knock up into the ultimate. The chrono shift just in time. Scout does get one though. Sends Xiaopeng backwards and Audi spaces himself out. Messy from DMO. And Scout is just having a field day. Xiaopeng needs a kill. At this point, you feel while in the bottom lane, Shubin and Mitsuki will kill, or at least force a flash out from Maker, who gets healed and still dies in the end. Seven kills, each team, triple in the top side for Scout. No, Scout is now five and two though. Three kills going to this Azir. DMO getting a little bit ahead of themselves in that top lane, although they do get something back in the bottom side, but Xiaopeng, thinking, okay, I can get this resurrection off. I don't have to be too worried with the chrono shift, but the problem is you bait in everyone else in the team. Chalitza can't follow up. There's no speed up left for him. And oh, this is disastrous. It really is. And Azir has five oh, kills pre-15. Don't make me watch it again. <laughs> so sad. We get to see how he dies, but uh, we could have guessed. That is Nash's. He already had the lost chapter. So this game very much has now turned into Shubin versus Scout. And mm -hmm. Scout does have an extra couple of kills under his belt, so it makes it a little bit more Azir favored right now. But 
I mean, if Shubin has to kind of be versus the world on this EDG side, and unfortunately, if the rest of DMO are giving kills over to the carries of EDG, that's going to become a big issue. I feel like this game was always going to be about Shubin anyway, with the yeah. uh, Zillion, with the Volley there locked in as well. So just further exemplifies how much focus there's going to be for DMO's bottom lane. Well, you can see across EDG, there's more turret plating in, the, in their back pocket. They do... Uh, they're trailing by about 300 gold in this second game. But after what you saw with Scout and his Dark Seal that was in hand, high expectations now built out of this mid laner for game two. Looking at this Rift Herald spotting just under a minute. So EDG in a pretty good spot to try and fight for this if they want to. You have the Nash's Tooth, as you said, picked up for Scout, and they have control of this jungle too. And with Twilight on the bottom side with no teleport, they can look to fight fairly quickly. Force out of their jungle a little bit here. Herald's going to be coming up. Herald number two, that is. Scout. There's the gold on the left-hand side of your screen. And into Chalitza. Well, Empress Divide sends him back, but the bear jumps over, and Scout maybe misjudges until JJ comes in. The flash away from Chalitza, but they've committed to topside, and everyone's roaming up. Could have been great if they got the pick, but they haven't, and now over. DMO want to fight. Teleport into the middle for Audi. Gonna pop call the Forge God. Shubin gets targeted on for JJ, but he gets poked down and dies. A mistake from the jungler of EDG while Mako goes in as well. He will fall while Audi gets a three man knockup, but they rely on Scout, who's all the way at the back. The Infernum with the Moonlight Vigil takes him down, and EDG decided one at a time, and now Chalitz is angry. Will be running in, has the option of BBD and Audi with a frenzied maul. Bit of damage, Audi searing charges away. DMO in a good position. Thundering Roar just running out on Chalitza, so wasn't able to get the stun onto Audi, but DMO, they win that fight. They will get this Rift Herald and look to crack open a couple of these turrets if they want to, but you still have that dragon about to spawn in just 15 seconds. So DMO will be looking to rinse and repeat that fight with a couple of their cooldowns coming up slightly earlier, but still, you're going to be looking at the likes of Scout having that Emperor's Divide back and a lot more of the bigger ultimates still available for EDG. Uh, watch this one again. Call the Forge God was good. I think Audi played a pretty crucial part. But Zillion's ulti. Yeah, Audi got this big knock up here. The problem was JJ went in earlier, couldn't get anything off with the Dragon's Kick, so he ends up just falling down. Great Moonlight oh, Vigil no. from Shubin as well, but here we go. JJ still has kick. Be You've got a lot of ultimates here and for Mitsuki EDG. Mitsuki just stands in the way of the soldier as well. True oh! shot barrage. But Scout's going to finish this one up against the wall. Now Shampung has to back away, and they've just given over the dragon. Four versus five. No ult on Audi, so oh, here we go. Line. They want to start the fight, but look at Shubin in the back line here. Has Infernum for the fight. Audi's low. Double Bob kills him into the back. It's Dragon still secured by BBD, but Shubin is so confident. He's walked into the middle of the fight, kiting around. They can't kill him because Aphelios oh has his team word. after a triple after the shutdown before. It's ready to play round two. And I thought that fight was going to go so much better for EDG. They had the ultimates available on BBD, Scout, JJ. And I was like, right, guys, here we go. Set up in the pit. When DMO run into you, just knock them back with the <laughs> Emperor's Divide. But with both BBD and Scout's ultimate invested into trying to kill... Uh, I think it was Chalitza, but whoever they were trying to kill, well, it doesn't matter because now you've br used two of these big ults that could have been enough to turn around this fight, and it opens up for Shubin to move in aggressively, knowing there's no Call of the Forge God there, and they can pick up that fight. It's not even a question for me anymore. Am I looking at Scout or Shubin? I'm looking at Shubin. Yeah. We'll watch this again because it's a failure has seven kills. Yeah, so well, look, already you can see that you've got these two ultimates that we talked about down. And now when we're moving into this, Shubin's good to go. There's no <laughs> real CC that's going to be there. I don't know how he's surviving this long. I thought there would have been enough damage to take him down, but he's just about able to eke out enough damage. Picks up that triple kill. And where was this Shubin for so long? As two people are demo in the brush. Oh. Scout thinks he only saw one, but the Chrono Shift on top of the Rexxar while Twyla just dies. Now Scout is still building a name for himself in this game, but Shout Punk takes him down and it's left to a one versus one. Mitsuki in, makes it a bit unfair, and Jej is gonna get knocked up. Mitsuki, the, okay. I thought he thought the Sonic Wave was uh, coming in with a resonating strike. Shubin was behind him though, and he won't do it. No, but it will give the opportunity for EDG with everyone 
on DMO going topside to crack open this mid lane turret. So at least they're getting back something more than just a one for one trade. But I mean, I'm looking at Shubin in this game now. I Runin's Hurricane. More than likely going to be getting towards that fan. Actually, it doesn't even look like it. Just going to go straight for the death stance as this third item and make sure that he's incredibly difficult to deal with in these fights. Ah, he saw Twyla over a warden thought it's only him commit. But oh, there's two. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, I mean, for Scout, who's so damn fed, getting another kill, sure. But also giving over the kill does go to Xiaopeng. It's yep. not going to be the end of the world. This Rek'Sai has kind of got to the stage where when we get to team fights, it's not going to be massively useful. But still, it's nice to get some kills back. And when we look at that gold, there is a 3,000 gold lead for DMO right now. And a lot of that is on the AD card. So we will watch with bated breath as level 12 Shubin has picked up a rapid fire cannon straight oh. out. That's his third item. So it becomes really difficult now for EDG to deal with Shubin. Because not only is he a Felix, not only is he 7 and 0, he's also going to have Twilight who's going to be working to keep him alive. Going to be accelerating him in fights as well. So that movement speed means that Shubin can play these super aggressive fights and make sure that he's in the midst of things like we saw at that Dragon Pit. So he's only going to get so much more use out of this pick right now. Colonel's flip-flop. He's jumped down a lot after that last fight, and I think I would too. Demo is set up for a 2-0, and I will say that early, even with a 3k gold lead, because a Felios this fed this early in the game, I don't care about scaling anymore. Mm. I care about when does he get his fourth item, his fifth item. Is it before 30? Most likely. We've got a Baron sitting up, though, with the control ward in the back of the pit. And he's got a 50 CS lead over Scout as well, who we're talking about the two that we're keeping an eyes on to be the big carries. Yep. So Rabbit on Death Cap nerdy completed for Scout is going to be a big power spike, but I don't know if it's enough, especially as you can see DMO wanting to play towards this Baron and try and bait EDG into another unfavorable fight. One more fight and EDG will lose this Baron, but if EDG can find themselves in a Felios without a Chrono Shift, then maybe this game comes back and we start scaling a little bit more. So. It's item checkup time because Cloud Dragon's on the horizon in 40 seconds. Waiting for that Ravidons from Scout. Waiting for to see what comes forth here for Shuva and Lisa components. <laughs> Twyla just got a rod of ages. I didn't ages. even see the rod of ages. He got a 20-minute rod of ages. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why? I didn't even spot that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Twyla, I'm trying so Dude. hard to big you up. I know every time I look at Demo, Twyla's looking good. But then he does these weird item builds like GLP Cassiopeia and a 20-minute Rod of Ages. I'm just like, come on, dude. Let, give me something to work with here. Mm. I'll wait for the uh, Protobelt Azir next time he's on it. <laughs> yeah. Scout has found Twyla. Let's see how this Rod of Ages comes in handy. Teleports in. As the kick is available for JJ as well. He's going to slow down with the hose. Out he gets the knockup thanks to the ultimate. And he doesn't have time to use his ulti. Twilight lets the team down. Yes, he seed before he can get it down. So now EDG with all these members on the top side can start to commit towards this bar. And you don't have that tool we were talking about for Shubin. So yeah. with JJ still having this kick up and how successful he was in getting on to Shubin in the last game, there is a potential for him to disrupt anything DMO try and fight against. As Mitsuki's been caught on out, BBD's here as well. The dredge oh, line and the ultimate into the back line. They've found Shubin and DMO with such a lead just need to keep him alive. He will manage to flash and heal his way out of there. As Mitsuki uses a stone plate, but Chalita can't re-engage. It's Shao Pung. That's how you throw away a game. That's how you throw away a 7-0 Ophelios. The thing here, though, is Twyla has respawned, has that teleport. He's going to use it towards the mid lane. So EDG trying to bait DMO into this pit, pretend like they're on this Baron, see if they can get onto Shubin once again. They're waiting. I don't know why JJ doesn't really need to be still. There's nothing really left here for EDG, though, to disrupt Shubin. So with Twyla's ultimate still up, this could actually be a DMO favorite fight despite Xiaopeng being dead. On Vision now begins. Where is Shubin? Still mid. The pings go down. They know they're safe for now until Shubin goes into Fog of War. Audi's there, hidden. Needs to knock up as Baron's going to be taken into the back line. It's still there. Jeje with the smite and it's secured. But now the shove back from Scout may have done enough until Aphelios gets a triple kill. But thankfully he dies in the end and BBD's left with Chalitza. Big Bear versus Wonderboy. And it's Wonderboy who lives out. That was a 
way more of a closer fight than I expected. BBD though managing to finish out. It turns out having two carries sometimes works out better than just having the one with that big knockback coming through from Scout, giving the opportunity for EDG to close out that fight. Baron going over as well to EDG is massive, but Chalitza coming in, they try to burst out Scout, but with that Zonyas they can't quite. And then here, that's the decision making we talk about Scout for. That's what makes him <laughs> such a potent Azir player, because flashing forward, shoving everyone on DMO back in aggressively towards BBD. And although you do get this moment of Ophelio's things, it still means EDG can close out the fight. Yeah. Having Inferno in a fight is always a bonus. He's got Storm Races. <laughs> He's got Storm Races for I feel like you probably go Death Dance at this I point. I was going to say, I would have preferred to see Death Dance. Look, the, the crit I is guess. nice. He's, he's full crit right now, which is great. Yeah. But I still think having that survivability in fights to give you a little bit more leeway for Twyla, or even maybe open up for Twyla to pop it onto the likes of Chalitza or someone else in these fights as well could work out really well. But, I mean, look, Shubin is going for this full damage. He knows he's got basically his Death Defiance he is more the hero, so with Twyla. Yeah. So, yeah. So he doesn't care. Maybe double IE to finish off. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Expect a Death Dance or a BT as EDG picked up the Baron in that last straight. It's only left onto BBD. They get bottom while... Hang on, are you ready? Because Scout pushes it back in. That's the ultimate used by Twyla underneath the turret. Chap Hung doesn't care. So has a lot of damage. Has to ult now as the bombs kill him. He comes on out and Twyla lives. DMO are pushing mid Dagda. And they're pushing everywhere. They're doing everything. They've managed to get Scout. And despite there being two members of DMO on top side, EDG are prepared to battle mid. So, DMO, they're coming out ahead here. They definitely are. That's what happens when the most fed on? member goes down. 36 kills, 26 minutes. That's part of it. It's an interesting game in League of Legends. <laughs> yeah. You can say that again. Baron Buff will be ending soon, though, so DMO will back away. But either way, like, this is... This is super strong from DMO. This is not what I expected to see from them here today. So Rod of Age is stacking up as well. <laughs> it's nearly useful. Well, it's, uh, and it's getting it to a useful. point where it's like, yeah. But I mean, isn't the second stack of Rod of Age is like super go like already gold efficient? Yeah. It's like uh, the second it's or the third, third, I think it's is, third is already yeah. so gold efficient. Base stats are like 91%. Yeah. So uh, it's obviously an efficient item. And with the way things are going, why not? Have more mana means you can throw more bombs, means it's you can also have more enough health to... health as well, means you yeah. can play a little bit further forward. It's, if you do get to Ovan, you've still got that survivability for yourself to just keep yourself alive, to keep Shubin alive. It's like this chain reaction of events that needs to happen, so then Shubin can carry, but he's doing that right now. 10, 1, and 3. It looks like he's actually going to go in towards a Bloodthirster as that last item to get a bit more survivability in his kit. So, I mean, Shubin's all out on the damage right now. You know what I love about Xiao Peng? This game, he's always behind enemy lines. He's pretty useful as a Rek'Sai, even at this point in the game. And Cloud Souls on the horizon in 10 seconds. So, DMO with control in River are begging EDG to walk in as Teleport comes through. Apologies. That actually might be a GA, which I wouldn't mind either on Shubin instead of the Bloodthirster, well, but we'll have to see. Let's see what the fight for now, because the turret's already up. poked yeah, them out. Scouts at half health, thanks to Shubin. Cloud Soul given over. Of course, it won't be game ending, but still, DMO feeling pretty comfortable. Mid priority obtained by Scout, but DMO walking through this choke. Graviton with the ulti from the Moonlight Vigil connects, but that means Shubin can walk in. Still a lot of minions on this top side, too, as well, though. It needs to be cleared out. It does actually get the terror before they can get to it, so. EDG, they do lose the soul, but it's, it's a cloud soul, and I mean, you don't have a huge amount of. Um, champions that can use the soul portion of it, but definitely that 20% CDR, it's going to be super nice on the ultimate, so Twyla having that ultimate up a lot sooner, because it's super low cooldown at the moment anyway for this Zillion, so I like it. I mean, it'll work out pretty well for what DMO are looking to do. Bear's going to be fast after Stormbringer sure. for about six seconds, so that's always fun. He's also got Righteous Glory, so uh, setting everything up for Shubin to carry in the back. Let's wait until see what that BT, uh, sorry, BF sword turns into, because the way this game's gone, if he had a GA, he would live twice. James Bond, completely. You, you always live twice mm. if you're a failure. <laughs> Probably is the most James Bond kind of character, right? He uh, has different weapons. Yeah. Uses them all really he's got, well. He's got Q. Who he gives never them dies. To him as well. You know. You know yeah. People keep thinking he dies, but he always comes back. Yeah, that's right. What yeah. fresh is Q? 
No, I mean, he's got his sister. Just oh, gives him all he's got to use the armor, Adam. you know? It's like, I got this gadget for you. How don't yeah. you want to try it out? Yeah. Always, you know, just uses the gadget without asking. <laughs> Big sigh from, from the sister. Well done. I think James Bond is right on the money there yeah. for Aphelios. That's probably why it's so frustrating, you know? The protagonist doesn't die. You're <laughs> like, how does armor. he not die? He's got plot armor. That's yeah. the problem. It's like he almost goes down, and then he just pulls out this massive inferno and ends up winning the game. And the he's got this the plays. bomb on yeah. do do. Oh, wait, am I allowed to do that? I don't know. That's all right. Hey, we're there's a lot the, of DMCA we're already going, in the, I'm not uh, ready for this. already right? in the deep end. I don't think it's going to pick out your voice. Don't worry. Actually. I don't know. I am pretty much pitch perfect, to be honest. No, so. I got a DMCA through uh, Twitter, actually. Yeah, I remember seeing it. Uh, yeah, Old Tower. I'm kind of upset about that. It was a very old video. It wasn't even a good video. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll just delete it. As uh, We've been here mid for about 200 hours now. As Twyla coming in for the ultimate clockwork roundup. Baron's up, though. That's why you see waves being pushed. And EDG stuck mid while DMO make the move, but they're on a ward. And we begin the dance again, but this is just going to go down. Someone get there. They're trying to. Audi does have Call of the Forge, Starting but he's off. the loser. with the engage in the back line. Box is there. Shuman sets up the turret down on the maker as the flash away. Call the Forge got great with three, but scouts all the way in the back. Xiaopunk goes a bit too far forward, but Mitsuki finds a re-engage. Xiaopunk somehow lives for so damn long, but Shuman is at full health. BBD driving over the wall. He flashes on in because he has a zillion. And this clockwork roundup has ended with another triple over to DMO's 80 carry. Who needs a karma when you got the zillion? Shubin's feeling it. And he's looking to close EDG out in a 2-0 stop. DMO on the verge of their first ever series win here in the LPL Summer. And they do it in style. Cleanly against EDG. They bait them in. 13-1-4. and four. Shubin is just that Aphelios player. I'm sorry for you, Helper, but there's no damn way you were getting back on this roster. Shubin looking clean on this Aphelios. DMO hanging all their hopes on this AD carry, and he comes out clutch. A big way to finish off the series. A 2-0 from...